Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. Today we're doing a special video just for you guys, the beginners. I get hundreds of messages every day from fishermen who want to learn about particular topics and I get a lot of messages from people who are absolutely new to the sport and don't know where to begin or they have particular questions. This video is for you. And we're going to organize this video by topics. So I'm going to tell you how to pick the right gear which fish to target, which bait to use, how to locate fish in a particular body of water, all of the basics. And we're gonna include links in the video description to lots of more detailed videos that go into more depth on particular topics. And as always, here at the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, we organize our videos by topic. So if there's a particular topic that you'd like to learn, like how to catch carp or how to catch catfish or how to tie rigs, we organize all those videos by playlist so you can watch all those videos back to back. There's many different ways to catch a fish, but all fishing techniques fall into two categories. There's fishing with bait, which is basically using food to catch the fish or there's fishing with artificial lures or flies that mimic food. If you're new to fishing and you struggle with casting, stick with bait fishing until you get more comfortable casting and retrieving. Casting and retrieving is a technique and a skill that requires a lot of practice. It's like hitting a baseball or throwing a football. It's something you should go out in your front yard and practice. Take a fishing uh, rod and reel and put a piece of lead on the end of the line, no hook, and then put a target out in your front yard, a paper plate or something, and just practice trying to cast as close as you can to that paper plate, and then retrieve it and cast and retrieve until you feel comfortable doing that. When you're first starting and learning how to cast and retrieve, bait fishing's a great place to start because there's just a lot less casting and retrieving, and your accuracy is not as important. So if you're bait fishing, you may cast and retrieve a dozen times a day. If you're fishing with a lure for bass, you can cast hundreds of times uh, in a single day. And you have to cast much more precisely and consistently if you have any hopes of catching fish. With small kids, casting can not only be difficult and uh, damage your equipment when they get things all tangled up and everything, it can also be a little bit dangerous because if they're not careful, they can hook their neighbors or hook themselves. But with bait fishing, you can go and cast it out there, let it sit, put the rod in the rod holder, and when a fish comes and bite, let the, let the kid come over and reel in the fish. So a child as young as two years old can participate safely in fishing and have a great time doing the most exciting part without knowing how to cast and retrieve. If you're brand new to fishing and bait fishing, there's four species of fish here in North America that you should look at targeting. Probably the most popular is panfish, bluegill, sunfish, shellcracker, red ear, pumpkin seed, crappie. Uh, these are all pretty much the same fish, just slightly different species, slightly different colorations, but they behave the same way, they look really similar, and you can use the same techniques to catch them. To find a bluegill or a sunfish is pretty simple. You go to a lake which usually is full of these things and you find a spot where a tree overhangs the water and puts a shadow on the water and they'll be down there in a school in that, in that shadow. Or you go on a dock and look down underneath the dock where the shadow of the dock is and you'll see all these little fish swimming around. They're usually just you know four or five, five inches long. Those are bluegill and you can catch tons of them. You put a little piece of earthworm on a very small hook, uh, typically something for like a number 10 hook to a number 14 hook, and just drop it down there underneath a bobber, you'll catch a ton of them. Uh, trout fishing is another great way to start if you're in the northern climates and places where you don't have a lot of bluegill. Typically we'd go to a stock lake, uh, someplace where they have tons of little little rainbow trout that they've stocked in there, or you go to a pay pond where you can pay a fee to catch stocked rainbows, and you go and you try to find out where the school of fish are, and the trout will kind of move around in a school, and they like to be in places where there's a lot of oxygen and cool water, so if there's a fountain, or if there's a, a creek that dumps into the lake or pond, um, you go and fish those spots, and you use earthworms, salmon eggs, power bait, and it works really well. Typically, you're gonna to wanna to use a really small hook, something like a number 10, a number 12, a sized hook. 
Catfish and carp are also great fish for beginners that respond very well to bait. And they're also quite big and they can be really fun to catch because they can get quite enormous, frankly. Um, there's also places where you can just catch them hand over fist. I have entire playlists of videos on just how to catch carp and just how to catch catfish, baits, rigs, how to locate them, the whole thing. So I'll check those videos out. I'm going to put links to my how to catch carp playlist and my how to catch catfish playlist uh, in the video description. So definitely check those out. If you're a brand new bait fisherman who lives near salt water, the best way to learn which fish to target and how to fish is to go to a fishing pier. There's fishing piers all along the east and west coast and they usually have a bait shop nearby and you can go there and they'll tell you exactly what to buy, what bait to use, what fish are in. And if the fishing pier is any good, there's usually lots of other fishermen around and you can watch and see what they're doing, watch and see what they're catching. And most fishermen are really generous with tips and knowledge when it comes to helping brand new fishermen. Once you start targeting big trophy fish, they're not so helpful. But if you're a newbie and you just want to catch some little croaker or spot or something, a lot of people will show you how to do it. And that's a great way to learn how to fish because there's so many people around on the fishing pier who can help you out. As opposed to freshwater fishing where we're usually more by ourselves. Picking the right location is more important than anything else when it comes to fishing. It's more important than your gear, it's more important than your bait. Putting your hook in front of fish is the ultimate skill a fisherman needs to have. And when you're new, this can be really intimidating and kind of overwhelming. So some places to start are online. Most states have a fish and game website with lists of places and what fish are found there. And a list of fish and where the best places to target them are. Also check out online Facebook groups, online forums. There's usually lots of people who are willing to help out a new fisherman find a place to go catch some bluegill or some small stocked catfish. Um, if nothing else, look for places where there's lots of fishermen, whether it's below a dam, a fishing pier or dock, or just a popular lake in the city. Uh, even if the fishing's not that great, just being around other fishermen and being able to see what they're doing, see how they're catching fish, what they're using, and being able to talk to someone can be really helpful when you're learning how to fish. Once you get better at fishing and get a little bit more confidence and understand how it works, then you can go off and start exploring and finding your own secret fishing spots. When it comes to buying fishing gear, it's important that you do as I say and not as I do. You do not need to spend tons of money to get into the sport. For less than $40, you can buy a complete setup for fishing for bluegill or catfish or carp. Um, you can walk in right now to Walmart or any sporty goods store and get perfectly good rod and reel combos with line already on the reel for well less than $20. And if you get a sale, you can do it less than $10. I have loads of videos where I do just that. And I'll put a link in the description to a couple of my favorites. So definitely check those out to see what you need to get a basic fishing setup. Any basic fishing setup usually requires a rod, a reel, a line, some hooks, some weights or bobber, and a pair of pliers to get the hook out of the fish's mouth. That's all you need to get started into fishing. When you walk into a fishing store, you'll generally see three different types of rods and reels. And you have to pair the right reel with the right rod. This is why it's good to buy combos. You buy the rod and the reel already together as a package. It's usually cheaper and you don't have to worry about pairing up the right rod with the right reel. But you still have to choose between spinning reels, bait casting reels, and spin casting reels. A spinning reel is called a spinning reel because as you turn the handle, the whole reel spins. A bait casting reel are smaller, rounder, and the handle is on the opposite side of a spinning reel. A spin casting reel is generally the type of reel sold with Barbie rods and Mickey Mouse rods and the stuff marketed towards little kids, and it's casted using a button, and it looks like a spinning reel with a little bit of a plastic cone covering up the spool. I tend to recommend that people start off with spinning reels and spinning rods. I think they're simpler than bait casting reels and bait casting rods, but they're uh, better performance and they last longer than the Mickey Mouse type spin casting reels. 
if you want to see a video where I talk about the differences between the different types of rods and reels and how to tell which type of rod is which, check out the video in the description about spinning reels versus bait casting reels. When you're picking a rod, a lot of people think you pick the rod based on what you want to catch. No, no. Pick your rod based on what you want to cast, okay? A lot of people think that the longer the rod, the bigger the fish. No, this isn't true. The longer the rod, the further you can cast. So let me give you an example. This is a little $9 rod and reel combo I got at Walmart. It's called the Dock Demon. Tiny little thing. I've landed 20 plus pound catfish on this, no problem. It's great for big fish or little fish. It just can't cast very far. This rod right here is actually less powerful and more prone to breaking than that little tiny one, but it can cast much, much further. The length of the rod has to do with how far you can cast. The longer the rod, the more you can cast. But if it's too long, it becomes cumbersome to, to swing around, it's cumbersome to transport, and there's limited areas where you can actually cast it because of overhanging trees and things like that. Unless I need to cast really far, I like to get rods that are about the same height or length as I am. So I'm about six foot four, I like a good six and a half foot rod. That feels very comfortable to me to cast. And when you're taking little kids fishing, try to get a rod that's about as long as they are tall. If you try to take a six and a half foot rod and give it to a, a four year old, it's just way too much. Additionally, when you're looking at which rod to buy, you want to pair up a rod with whatever you're hoping to cast. So you look at the weight of your bait, your hook and the lead you want to throw and that total weight should fall within the recommended lure weight of the rod. You look on the spine of the rod and right above the reel is a little bit of writing and it'll have the stats for the rod. It'll say its length, its power, its action, its recommended line weight and its recommended lure weight. So look at the lure weight on your rod and make sure that that rod is designed for casting something that weighs about as much as you normally cast. If what you cast is heavier than the recommended lure weight or lighter than the like recommended lure weight, your casting dif distance is going to suffer. Another thing you want to look at is the power of the rod. It'll be light or ultra light or medium or heavy or medium heavy. The power of the rod is how much force it can take, how much you can pull and horse that fish without the rod bending or breaking. And generally, the heavier the rod, the more it's designed to throw and the more aggressive you can be with it. Let me give you some examples of some great beginner rod and reel combos. Um, as I mentioned before, this little dock demon is great. It's great for little kids uh, because it's not very long and it's easy for them to swing around. It's perfect for when you're fishing underneath docks or off of a kayak or a boat. You don't need to cast, you're just dropping your line straight down. It's just perfect for that sort of thing and it runs between $9 to $14 for the rod reel combo with the line on it. You can get these at Walmart, Amazon.com and a lot of other places as well. The Shakespeare Big Water Alpha runs uh, about $25 for this rod and reel combo and it's great for carp or catfish. It can throw about an ounce of lead. Slow rivers, uh, casting a little bit further for catfish and carp, Shakespeare Big Water Alpha. If you have a little girl in your life who likes to be a pretty princess, this is an awesome little rod combo. It's the Roddy Hunter. This rod and reel combo comes in a variety of sizes and lengths um, and it comes pink on pink with little red and green sparkles on the reel when you turn the reel. So uh, this thing was, I think $12 for the rod and reel combo is what I paid. You can get it online at amazon.com and a lot of other places as well. Ugly Stick, uh, which is a very classic American brand name, uh, they make a rod called the GX2, which runs about $30 and uh, you, I think $29.99 for the rod, or you can buy it a rod and reel combo version for $39.99, just $10 more for the reel. And the GX2 comes in a variety of sizes and lengths depending on what you need to cast and your casting conditions. And it's a very good, durable rod. It's about $10 more, $15 more than the no-name brands that you'd pick up at Walmart. 
but uh, it works pretty darn well. And I did a great video where I showed how indestructible these rods are. And if you'd like to see that video, check a link in the description. But if you go to Walmart or you go to Dick's Sporting Goods or Academy or any of these places, there are always some no-name brand or Shakespeare brand rod and reel combos like this one which are about 15 bucks give or take and they come with line a rod and a reel and just look at the spine and see whether or not it's designed to cast the kind of things that you want to cast and whether the length is about the length that you want so once you've picked out your rod and reel combo you need to rig it up and i'm going to show you how to do that on the spinning reel this little bit of wire it flips over, it's called the bale. This is what controls whether or not line comes off the reel. And what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to flip it open like that. When it's open, line can come off the reel. Then you're gonna take the line and you're gonna put it through the eyes of the fishing rod. These little circles here. And you're gonna feed this through, okay? And you just go start at the very bottom one and work your way all the way to the very top. And it's very important to not forget about flipping that bale first, because if you don't, you'll have to redo everything. Okay, there you go. Now, once you've pulled the line out, you can flip that bale over, and now no more line will come out, okay? And that stops it, and you've now rigged up your rod and you just want to double check and make sure the line actually goes through each one of the eyes and that you didn't miss any eyes all right the next thing you're going to want to do is tighten up your drag the drag is what allows line to come off the reel without the line snapping the purpose is to tire the fish out without allowing the fish to break your line okay you can see here when i pull line comes off the reel. It makes a little bit of a clicking noise. This knob on the top of the reel right here allows you to adjust the tightness of the drag. And it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. So if you go left, it takes less force for the drag to come off. If you tighten right, it takes more force for the line to come off, okay? And the way you adjust it is you tighten this up, okay? and then you, you pull it a little bit. And you wanna feel lots of resistance, but you should be able to jerk the line quite aggressively without it breaking the line. And that's when you know you've set the drag to the right amount. If you're fighting a fish and you find that the, the fish is pulling drag off too easily, just give it a little crank, tighten it down a little bit. And if at any point you need to pull some line off the reel or you find the drag is too tight, you can back off it a little bit. Also, on here, on every spinning reel, there's a little switch. Usually it's right here or down here. And this is the anti-reverse switch. If you switch it, then you can reel in both directions. If you flip it over, you can only reel in one direction. Always put it so that you can always only reel in one direction. Otherwise, it'll cause horrific tangles and line snarls. Uh, some people like to fight the fish by reeling backwards, but it's kind of an advanced technique and really if you're watching this video you have no business doing that. Keep the, the switch uh, so that the anti-reverse is always on and it can only reel in one direction. With spinning rods and spinning reels, you hold the rod in your dominant hand and you reel with your weaker hand. Okay, so right now this is set up for a right-handed person. If the reel handle is on the wrong side, that's okay. All spinning reels are ambidextrous. What you do, is there's a little cap. There's a nub and a cap on the opposite side of the reel handle. Just unscrew that with your fingers. And then you can either pull the handle straight out or on this model, you just turn it the opposite direction from that you reel. And then you put it in here and then do righty tighty lefty loosey, screw it in, and then replace the cap on the opposite side. And there you go, you've now turned it from a right-handed reel to a left-handed reel. And every spinning reel I've ever seen can do that. All right, now I'm gonna show you some really basic rigs. The most simplest rigs have the hook on the end of your line, 
and then you either put a bobber or a piece of lead in between the rod and your hook. In this situation, I've got a bobber. You want to use a bobber when the fish are closer to the surface or if there's lots of snags that, where your hook can get stuck on the bottom of the water, then you use a bobber to keep your hook safely above them. Bobbers have these little bits of plastic with little metal hooks inside on the top and the bottom. You depress, you depress the little bit of plastic and it exposes the hook and you just put your fishing line under the hook and then you release the plastic and the spring pins the, the line to the bobber. And then you flip it over and do the opposite. Then just make sure the top and the bottom of the bobber are attached to your line and you're ready to go. And you can adjust the location of the bobber by simply depressing the button and pulling the line, okay? So if the fish are sitting about 18 inches below the surface of the water, then put about 18 inches between your hook and the bobber. If you want to fish with lead instead of a bobber, the fish finder rig is a really basic uh, rig that I use all the time. And this is how you tie it. The fish finder rig is the rig I use the most and it's the rig I use in most situations where I want to fish on the bottom. It's simply a lead that slides upon the main line, a bead, a swivel, a leader, and a hook. Uh, you can use flat no roll inline leads like this, you can use egg sinkers, or you can attach a slider and then you can put all sorts of types of leads on there. And a slider is good in rivers because then you can adjust the weight depending on the current. Putting a bead above the swivel helps protect the knot and keep the swivel from getting jammed inside the lead, but it isn't always necessary. You can also use a lot of different types of leads and a lot of different types of sliders. I like to fish with large leads with a fish finder rig because the lead acts as an anchor that helps pull the hook point into the fish's mouth as it swims away with your bait. And this improves your hookup ratio. When it comes to attaching swivels or leads or hooks to your line, I basically use two types of knots. I use the polymer knot or I use the improved clinch knot. These are both pretty simple knots. They take a little bit of practice, but they're great for beginners. And I did two videos, one on how to tie the polymer knot and the other one on how to tie the improved clinch knot. I'm gonna put links in the description so you can check those knots out. Earthworms or night crawlers are probably the most universally good bait there is. Everything loves to eat night crawlers and earthworms. So if in doubt, use worms. The key with using worms is to not overdo it. If you use a big glob of worms, what you do is you're gonna get a lot of nibbles that don't get hooked, okay? So if you're fishing and you can see the fish hitting your line, your line's moving, the rod's twitching, feels like something's going on but nothing gets hooked, it means that your bait's too big or your hooks are too big. Because what's happening is fish are coming up and hitting your bait but they're not getting the whole thing in their mouth. They're just taking a bite out of it. And odds are that bite is not where the hook's at. If you use a smaller bit of worm with a smaller hook, then the fish come up and, and they swallow the whole thing into their mouth in one gulp and then you hook them. So if you're getting bites that aren't hooking up, go smaller. If you're fishing for really tiny fish, use a pair of forceps. If you're fishing for larger fish, use a pair of needle nose pliers. Take and grab the shank of the hook, okay? The shank of the hook is the part between the eye and where it bends. Grab the shank of the hook with the forceps or the pliers, and then turn it upside down so the point of the hook is facing down, and then shake the hook vigorously, and the fish will pop off. There's lots of different types of hooks out there. If you have any confusion about what types of hooks to use, check out this video I did on picking the right types of hooks. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to cast with a spinning rod. Take the spinning rod and grab it with your dominant hand. In this case, I'm gonna cast right-handed, so I'm grabbing it with my right hand. Then take your pointer finger, okay, and you're going to grab that line and pin it to the handle. Then you're gonna flip open the bail arm. Now at this point, the only thing keeping the line from 
flying off the reel is that pointer finger pinning the line to the handle. If you let go, nope, then everything comes off, okay? So, once again, I'm going to take my finger, pin the line to the handle, flip open the bail arm, and now we're ready to cast, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back and then you're gonna look behind you. You wanna look behind you to make sure that there's no tree limbs overhead that's gonna snag your, your hook. Look behind you to make sure there's nobody back there who's gonna get a hook in the back of their head. And then what you do is you go forward, flick that in a big arc, okay? And you flick it forward, and right at the moment you want your lure to go flying, you release with your pointer finger. And it's just like throwing a baseball. So imagine when you're throwing a baseball, the, the, the moment you would let go of your hand is the same moment you let go with your finger. The same point of time that you would release the baseball is the same timing for when you take your finger off the line, okay? So you go, wink. If you can throw a baseball, you can cast a spinning rod. The timing's exactly the same. Go out in your front yard, take a paper plate, lay it in the grass, and sit there and cast at that thing and just practice aiming for it. But when you're starting, line up straight at your target, facing it, then go back like you're a samurai with a sword and wing it that way, okay? And then you're staring right at your target, you're squared up with your target, and your front foot is pointed at the target, and you're going and winging right at the target. And just practice doing this for a little bit. You'll get good at it real quick. Well guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and it will help a couple of you get out there and learn how to fish and have a little bit more confidence to get out and try this awesome new sport. If you have anybody you know who's been looking to get into fishing, make sure to share this video with them. And if you wanna see more great videos from the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning and we have like 450 videos from all sorts of different topics with all sorts of different species of fish. Check out our playlists and check out all the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.